Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and Me Crafty Scrapper here on YouTube and Instagram and also over on Facebook at Me Crafty Scrapper Creates. Um, I wanted to share with you some Etsy finds and um, a few little things from Miss Betty Ann Renfro. Um, you will want all the stuff that I'm going to show you today. I'm just just telling you, just forewarning. Uh, we're going to start with Miss Jennifer from um, Graphics Candy over on Etsy. If you've shopped her Etsy shop, you know how beautiful her creations are. This is, I'm looking at my notes over to the left of me, sorry. Uh, this is the botanical kit. This is the uh, botanist bonus kit. And um, let me make sure that I get all of this right. These are the covers that she has created for journals. Look at that. I don't know that I have ever um, gotten a digital kit that had actual covers included with it. Those are just gorgeous. Um, I can see just mounting these, matting them on some craft cardstock and letting that be the cover of your journal. It would be gorgeous. I love that. That's the covers that come in the kit. I didn't even get to print all of the papers. That's how many pages is in this kit. It is a mega kit. Okay, so these are, this is the ephemera. So... I'm just going to go through all these, let you see them. Um, I mean, it is some gorgeous stuff. This is little uh, specimen slides. This one doesn't have the specimens in the middle, so you can put your own in there. And this one has the specimens included in it. Look at those pockets and the magnifying glass. It's just a very unique kit. I love it. Look at the ephemera. I want to print like 40 of these. I love that. And I love little bitty things. I love fussy cutting, so I love all of that. The tags are gorgeous. Uh, those are file folders. Isn't that gorgeous? Love it. Uh, these are the large specimen uh, windows with little bitty specimen pieces that you can put on those slides that didn't have anything on them. Look at that ephemera sheet. Um, my printer is an old printer, so it, it skipped a line of pixel. So that's why that's there. But look at those little tags there. Oh, I just love it. I love, love, love this kit. Jen, you did an amazing job on this kit. Look at the specimen pockets and then the tiny specimen windows. Love those too. And then that one. Look at those tags. Beautiful journaling cards. Uh, mount them on some craft paper. Because I printed all of my stuff on the premium uh, copy paper. So that's what, 32 pound. So um, this is not super thick. But it's, you know, thick enough to add to journals. But if you want it as standalone stuff, you might want to mount it on some cardstock. This is the journal pages beautiful stuff. Wait till you see this next one. Look at that butterfly. How pretty. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous journal pages. So uh, this would make a dynamic journal. I'm just saying. Uh, it's just beautiful. And it's got beautiful browns in it. It's got some beautiful greens in it. Yellows. Just very, very pretty stuff. Beautiful. I love these journal I like I like I even like the blank ones. Look, I can't even talk. I'm so excited. I even like the blank ones. Okay, and then these are just some of the pages that come with it. So this is journal pages. This is like the pattern papers and stuff. So that's journal pages. This is papers. And like I said, I didn't even get to print all of them. Gorgeous gold. Look at that worn look to that one. They're so pretty. These patterns are divine. And there again, my printer, my old printer, uh, left out a line of pixel. 
on that one. Look at that. Look at the detail on that page. So pretty. Little mushrooms in two different shades. Sorry, I swept that in right over the um, microphone. But there's like, uh, I want to say seven, eight, nine, maybe more pages of just the papers. I was running out of time to get all of this printed. And this is the bonus uh, sheets. There's two bonus sheets in this botanist bonus kit. Look at those pockets and tags. Love that ephemera. And then this one, um, I think it should be more of an orangey red than the yellow that it is. But um, I think that's just because of a um, file type that my printer didn't like. So anyway, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous kit. I wanted to show you some happy mail I got from Miss Betty Ann Renfro. Mm, listen to that. Uh, first off, she made me a skinny tumbler. She'd asked me what color I wanted. And I was like, well, if you're going to make it for me, okay, I'll tell you. I want um, white and teal or white and aqua, like a sparkly. So it's showing up more ocean blue on my camera, but it is a, um, a true aqua teal color. And it has little sparkles all in it. She's got my name in there. And look, there is no, this is resin. So it is embedded in there. So it's not going to flake off like um, some of your vinyl stuff has done in the past um, with insulated tumblers. But I have me some lemon water in here. And it is gorgeous. I've wanted a skinny tumbler for a while now. And I just love this. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Betty Ann. And um, I'm pretty sure she's going to be offering these for sale if not in her Etsy shop, just uh, message her, Betty Ann Renfro, uh, on Facebook or um, on YouTube also. Uh, Betty's Custom Design. And this is something very exciting. She has fabrics made of her um, stuff that's in her Etsy shop. So her digital kits... She has actually had fabrics made for the digitals that she has in her Etsy shop. So it says, Melina, hope you enjoy. Love you, Betty. And I'm going to go through. It's PP3, PP2, PP1, and then PAR1, so Paris, I'm wanting to assume. Uh, LL, that is the uh, Ledger and Lace. That's 3LL2. And... Uh, Avia, so aviation maybe, uh, one, and then HR, so this is something roses. Anyways, you'll be able, she has the fabric I know listed in her um, Etsy shop. And this is some gorgeous stuff, so let me open up this HR one and show you. It is just fabulous what you can get done with digitals nowadays. I mean, this is her digitals on fabric. Look at that. How gorgeous that is. That's probably my favorite out of all of them. So she sent us, uh, me and mom, samples of some of them. And um, I don't know what mom got. I don't know if we got duplicates or not, but um, I sure am glad I got what I got because it's all gorgeous. Uh, P, let's see, that's P, P1, 2, and 3. There's par 1, Ledgers and Lace. Y'all have seen me use that on my um, uh, videos before. This is par 1, so Paris. Oh, gracious. Look at that. How beautiful. I love this, Betty Ann. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, let's see here. I was looking to see if maybe one of these would go along with that, but I think these are mostly florals. Um, so I wouldn't probably 
use them with a um, botanical or that that botanical because uh, it's mostly plants and insects. Let's look at this one. This is Avia one. Oh, this is pretty. Oh, that's gorgeous. So, so pretty with like postcards in the background. Mm, so pretty. All right. So anyway, you get the idea. And I will be using these in future videos. So I'm not going to open everything. But you get the idea of how beautiful these are. Look at the florals on that one. Uh, the pearls on that one. Beautiful stuff. Gorgeous roses and pearls on that one. And then ledgers and lace um, is what it says. It's florals. It's got some ledger background. It's got lace background. Beautiful stuff. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Betty Ann. Um, I also have uh, one of her sheets, Betty Ann's, um, from her um, Etsy shop. This is... I'm wanting to say it's industrial tags, but um, I printed that one off because I thought the colors in it would go along with that uh, botanical. And then I had forgotten about this sheet. She made this sheet for our uh, boutique on Facebook. So um, we have it on the blog. So go to scrapbookingwithme.com and then in the left column you'll see blog go to that and then scroll down and you'll see all of Betty's freebies so this was a freebie and I love all the red in that beautiful stuff you did beautiful work Betty I'm just saying and so did Jennifer with this kit I can't wait to get into this I'm going to fussy cut out some stuff we are going to use this um, craft paper and we're going or that's cardstock and we're going to use one of these as our cover and mount that on some craft paper I'm thinking oh I think I want to do this one and um, I'll get some stuff fussy cut out and we'll make up a nice little journal with this uh, kit that I got uh, from Jen. And I will leave her um, link in the description box below. Y'all be sure to go over and uh, leave her some love, buy up some of her digitals, and don't forget to let her know that I sent you over. So, okay, so magic of uh, videoing. <laughs> We are on a totally different day. Look, I have totally different <laughs> nail polish on. Um, I had to split this video up into two parts to try to um, piece everything together. And um, I was having some uh, printer issues. My, my fault, not uh, Miss Jennifer's. Um, this is one of the pages from my vintage invoice, um, that pack that she has on her Etsy shop. It is gorgeous. The invoicing is so vintage. This is so me. I love this kind of stuff. But it is called My Vintage Invoice Pack. And um, I am going to get all the rest of those printed off. And um, we'll eventually make something out of all that. Look, I have fussy cut these pieces. And I am so excited. I've got my craft paper already. And so excited about making uh, a new journal with this digital kit. And I want to put some of this um, invoicing in too. So I'm going to get all of those printed off. Um, but I will have the links uh, below to her Etsy shop and Miss Betty Ann Renfro's Etsy shop. But um, So that way you can get your own stuff that I have shared with you today. Um, we are going to announce the winner of our little ephemera book that we made the other day in, an, um, in a video. Um, I had somebody like two days after I made the video comment, who won? <laughs> 
Uh, just keep watching my videos, y'all. I guarantee you that um, you will see a new video pop up that says, and the winner is, or the winner of my giveaway, and then something else that goes along with the video. I don't normally uh, post a video just of, hey, here's my winner, and then I get off the, you know, camera. I, I, I just don't do that. I like blending my videos together, giving you combo videos, different things in one video. I love doing that. I love um, putting things together and uh, whether it be paper crafting or video content, <laughs> I like putting it all together. So I guarantee you, you never have to ask when I'm going to be announcing the winner or anything like that because I will announce it. Um, it'll be in my time usually and it'll usually be about a week out. Once I um, announce a giveaway, it's usually a week, not two days. It's usually a week when I announce the winner. So um, I have that pulled up, my uh, YouTube uh, comment picker. Dot com. I have that pulled up and ready to um, get that all situated and announce my winner, but I'm going to do that in just a minute, making sure on my iPad over here. Y'all know I pull it up on my iPad when I announce winners, but anyway, we'll be announcing the winner of this and that beautiful blue fern ephemera that they are getting, that uh, discontinued blue fern ephemera. In this video, we are getting the um, tea stained scraps that I had left over from a mini journal that I did. Look how beautiful those are. And I've been sitting staring at them when I come into my craft room thinking, what can I do with those? And I thought of something. I'm going to do some stamp collage. So nothing else added to these. It's just going to have stamping on it. I've got black um, ink. I've got walnut stain. I've got forest moss, crackling campfire, and carved pumpkin. We now have carved pumpkin, the oxide. This is the regular distress ink, but we have the distress oxide ink in carved pumpkin in the shop right now. Scrapbookingwithme.com. And um, I've had lots and lots and lots of people here lately asking in the comments, where did you get so-and-so? What is that you're using? Where where did you get it? I try my best to always name the stuff that I'm using. Um, forgive me if I don't, but I try my best to always name what I'm using. And then I introduce each video with, this is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com. So everything that I use is usually from scrapbookingwithme.com. If it's not going to be from our shop, I will let you know. Uh, just like those Etsy finds I just showed you, those are not at scrapbookingwithme.com, but I'll leave you a link down below <laughs> to let you know where exactly they come from so that you can get your hands on it too. But if you see me using stuff like all of this came from the shop, and um, I always have that linked in the description box below. Just look for Scrapbooking With Me Shop and all of our links are underneath there. And big, big news. We have opened up international shipping again. Um, the post office is being nice again, so we're able to do that. However, at this very moment, Australia is still returning all of the packages we send out to, to people in Australia. So I'm sorry as I can be, but it's not us. It's the post office. So I don't know if it's right at customs, they're refusing it, or what is going on. But um, something about they don't have enough planes to send over all of the stuff. So they're just rejecting random packages so they don't have to send planes over. So... I don't know if that's true or not. That's the thing we've been told by mm, at least five different people in the post office association <laughs> or company or whatever it is. So, um, you know, when we call and say, hey, why are y'all rejecting our Australia packages and sending them back to us? That's why. So it's not us. It's customs. So I don't know what what all is up with that right now. But anyways, we have opened up international shipping again. So um, 
shop to your heart's content. We just had a big restock. Um, and so if you go in there and you do all your shopping, put in your address and it should go to you unless you live in Australia, that is, and they're still not accepted. Anyway, next big thing I am sharing is my Peace and Pages September subscription box. This is uh, quickly becoming my favorite new subscription box other than what we have at the shop at scrapbookingwithme.com. Um, my cute little top I've got on when I went and got my nails done this morning. This is a top and it is wild and it is crazy and it's me. I just love it. Um, this is a top that was given to me by Miss Tanya Rose. Um, the same lady that um, I made that uh, journal for. The green one with the nice eucalyptus on the front that same lady. She is a fellow uh, singer, songwriter, artist, and um, I had sent her that journal and she had given me some clothes from a company she used to sell for and it this one just jumped out at me like, uh, Melina, this one's yours. Get it, get it, get it. <laughs> Uh, so thank you Miss Tanya and she um, sent me I mailed her her journal and she sent me um, a Facebook private message and said she loved it so much so I am glad you are enjoying your journal this is the Peace and Pages September uh, Deluxe Edition subscription box and the theme or the name of this one is called the Peace Cafe mmm Okay, so they have nice cardboard at the top to um, protect your items. Oh, I'm already loving what this says. It says Vanilla Latte Rustic Slate Candle Company. <gasps> oh, gracious. So it is a soy wax melt snap bar. So you snap these and put them in your wax uh, warmer. Uh, Rustic Slate Candle Company out of Virginia. So, um, you know, I gotta smell it. I'm all about coffee. Oh dear heavens, that smells glorious. So, y'all are gonna want to uh, get you some of this. I'm just saying, this box actually is sold out. Um, but you can go to Rustic Slate Candle Company directly and buy from them. I will be getting me some more snap bars for my wax warmer. I love my wax warmer. You can ask my children. Bethany is constantly uh, re-putting, you know, wax stuff in. And I just did um, a reel with her on Instagram. Um, September the 1st is, um, you know, the start of the Burr months, B-E-R. <laughs> so everything fall comes out and uh, we are already decorated good for fall already at, at our house. So um, yeah, she had to put some wax melts in the wax warmer during that reel, during the making of that reel. Um, so she knows how much I love my wax warmer. This is a body scrub from Butterfly. <laughs> Look at that. B-U-T-T-A-H-F-L-Y. Butterfly. Oh my gracious. That is too cute. Um, Butterfly Skin Company out of New Jersey. This is the coffee scrub. Oh. Oh my. Oh, I can't wait to use that. It smells just like coffee. Oh, wow. I can't wait to use that. It is, I mean, it is scrub consistency. Yeah. It's got a nice grit in it, but nothing too abrasive. Oh, wow. That smells wonderful. That will be a great uh, pick-me-up, wake-me-up in the morning. I'm looking forward to using that. Oh, I'm already loving this theme. Let me get my messy rag so I can wipe my fingers off. <laughs> oh, that smells so good. And it is strong coffee, too. Mmm. Oh, me and Bethany are going to have a fun time with this one. This is a Coffee Time Mini Jigsaw Puzzle. 
So I'm assuming that we're going to put it together and it's going to look like that with all the cups of coffee. But it's mini. Look how tiny those pieces are. She and I are going to have a fun time putting that together. Beautiful. That is from the Micro Puzzles Company out of Florida. See, that's another reason I love this box. I get it because of the books that I get. But all the goodies that come in the deluxe box, so worth it. You've got to um, sign up. The October theme is going to be announced uh, this coming Saturday. T today is Friday, uh, September the 2nd. So uh, either Saturday or Sunday, they're announcing the October theme. I can't wait. But when I saw this one, I thought, mm, I love me some coffee. So I'm hoping that that's what this one is. And it was. Um, y'all, look, look, look. I'm covering that up because I don't want to see what that book is <laughs> yet. Look how big this is. This is, this is, I mean, grande. I mean, crazy, crazy, crazy big. 12 ounces of Campfire S'mores flavored coffee. I will be making me a cup of this when I get off of here. This is from the company called Sydney Roasting Company out of Pennsylvania. Oh my goodness. I am not a s'mores fan, but it is only because of the graham crackers. I will totally make me a chocolate chip cookie s'more. So instead of graham crackers, I use chocolate chip cookie. Yeah, that's not adding any more calories, right? Um, this is a ground coffee. Oh my, I am so excited about this. And I have those little, um, we have a K-cup maker here in the house. and But I have the little custom thing where I can put my own grounds in it. And my, mm, I'm going to make me a cup of this. So, uh, some coffee pots have a mind of their own, but we suggest starting with one tablespoon or 0.25 ounce ground coffee per six ounce coffee cup okay so i'm going to put in two tablespoons because i love strong coffee i love my coffee strong uh my papa used to say if i can stand my spoon up in it that's how i like it i don't like it maybe that strong but i do like myself a good strong cup of coffee um i don't like when i'm pouring it in my cup and i can see through it and i don't like that that's just coffee colored water <laughs> Okay, so that was the four different goodies that you get in the deluxe box for October. And now, <laughs> that was a drum roll for anybody that didn't, didn't realize that. Okay, so with um, Peace and Pages, you can um, suggest to them or request to them what genre of books you would like. Um, you can request all just all Christian fiction, or you can request um, a multitude of Christian fiction, or uh, mystery, or romance, or whatever you want. You just go down through there and click all the ones that you want. Then you can actually go back and you can, you know, renew it, fix it a different way if you want to later. If you find out that you're getting books that you don't really care for, but. This is my second box. I love the first book, and I will link that video in the description box below. This one, I have not heard of this book, but I know I'm going to love it. The Other Passenger by uh, Louise Candlish. Candlish. Uh, let's read a, a blurb about her, the author, first. Um, Louise is the Sunday Times best-selling author of 14 novels, including Our House, which won the Fiction, Crime, and Thriller, Thriller Book of the Year at the 2019 British Book Awards and was uh, shortlisted for several other awards. It is soon to be a major ITV drama made by Death in Paradise paradise producers red planet pictures louise lives in london with her husband and teenage daughter okay so the blurb for the other passenger it all happens so quickly one day you're living the dream commuting to work by ferry with your charismatic neighbor kit in the seat beside you the next 
Kit hasn't turned up for the boat, and his wife, Malia, ooh, I like that name, <laughs> has reported him missing. When you get off at your stop, the police are waiting. Another passenger saw you and Kit arguing on the boat home the night before, and the police say that you had a reason to want him dead. <gasps> you protest. You and Kit are friends. Ask Malia. She va she'll vouch for you. And who exactly is this other passenger pointing the finger? What do they know about your lives? No, whatever danger followed you home last night, you are innocent, totally innocent, aren't you? <gasps> mm. Okay, so I have read books by B.A. Paris, uh, a gripping read. I couldn't turn uh, the pages fast enough. Mm. And I have read um, Shari Lapina. I have read her books too. Uh, a compulsive read that builds to an unimaginable climax. Okay, so B.A. Paris, um, her books are, I say her, their book, I'm going to say their because I don't know um, male or female. Um, their books are a little bit, bit on the dark side for me, but they were still intriguing. I still read them, still completed them. A little bit on the dark side. Uh, Shari's is, is a little bit that way too. So I think I said Sherry first. I think it is Shari. Um, a little bit on, on the edge too. So this might be a little dark for me, but I'm still going to give it a try. I love mysteries, and this sounds um, very intriguing. I'm very excited for that one. So, um, last month was a Christian fiction. This month, they sent me um, a mystery or thriller. Uh, this is, let's see, Rustic Slate Candle Company for the um, bar, the wax bar in there. It's just information about them. And, um, oh, we get um, a discount when we go to their rusticslate.net to shop and um, get a discount, yay, for being a Peace and Pages subscriber. I love discount codes. Uh, this book uh, was written in 2020 or released, copyrighted in 2020. So um, that's another thing with Peace and Pages. They send you um, books that are no older than three years old. So I really appreciate that because I try my best to keep up with my reading and keep up with um, brand new books. So, um, I usually do read rather quickly. Uh, that has been something that um, just started not too long ago because I used to be one of the oldest, I mean oldest, well I might be one of the oldest, um, one of the slowest. I'm trying to get all of this stuff organized so I can get a nice pretty little picture of it later. Um, slowest readers, eh. Burr. But I have really picked up lately, and uh, I am looking forward to reading that book. But I really do appreciate that from Piece of Pages, that they send books that aren't um, too old. Um, I love classics, but most of them I've already read. So <laughs> I really like that I'm getting newer released books through this um, monthly subscription. So I will leave the info in the description box below. I get nothing if you sign up for Peace and Pages. Um, I am not affiliated with them. I just buy it every month. I'm signed up every month, just like you would be. Uh, I get nothing for it. I just like sharing this with y'all. So it's part of my booktube videos that I put up. But this one today, this video today, has got all kinds of stuff in it. This just happened to come in yesterday, and I wanted to share it with you. Mmm, still smell coffee. It smells so good. All right, let's make some stamped ephemera. And the very first one that I want to do comes from this um, Tim Holtz collection, uh, Papillon. And I know that means butterfly. I had many, many, many people tell me last time I used this stamp set. Um, that is pronounced this way, and it, it means um, 
butterfly in French. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm telling you, if I if I need to know anything, I just ask in a comment, and I'm going to get told. And I mean, I ask on a video, and I'm going to get told in a comment. Just saying. <laughs> Oh, man, let me get my stamping paper. My messy mat is messy right now, so I need to um, <laughs> I need to clean it. That's why I don't have that up here. I'm going to use black soot, and I'm going to just try to get right down the middle of this stamp and show you what my idea is. So right down the middle, this is the, forgot to tell you, Ledger Script um, stamp set from Tim Holtz. And right now, he's got a major uh, manufacturer backup going on. It is uh, pretty hard for us to get stamps in stock right now at the shop. So if something I'm using today is not in stock right now, we're, we've got it on order. It's just back ordered. So I just went down the middle of the stamp just to see. I like that. <laughs> just to see what it would look like. And then I'm going to get a bigger, my big stamp block. We have six inch by six inch stamp blocks in the shop now. We had a request for it and we went ahead and done that. And we have a few in there. We will order more if it becomes very popular. I want to use this crackling campfire. Something totally different uh, than just black, gray, and brown like I usually do. I just wanted that one little strip of um, like a script stamp in the background. And then I'm using the Crackling Campfire Oxide ink from Tim Holtz. This is one of his newer um, colors, released colors. All right, then I'm just going to go kind of in the middle of my tea stained paper. And I'm going to get something just to roll around and get me some even pressure. This is um, a roll of elastic. <laughs> they have stamp tools for this. And you know, I have the whole Tim Holtz um, stamp thing, platform thing. I just don't ever use it. I don't ever get it out of there. Oh, I love it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is get my trimmer and I am going to trim at the top. Try not to smear anything while it's still drying. I'm going to trim this off. Oop, oh, it's wanting to move. It's wanting to move on you, Moina. There we go. And then I'm going to trim at the bottom. And we're going to round the corners and ink the edges. I love this. I love making my own stamped ephemera. That is too pretty. Oh, I love it. Mm. Let's round our corners. And I love that it's not totally even Stevens, everything perfect. Um, I made it, so of course it's not perfect. <laughs> uh, and I think it'll need some splattering before we are done. I love this. I could put this on a page as a um, tuck. Put it just on the bottom edge of a page. Tuck some nice little things behind it. I could make it a flip up on a page. Pretty. And I love that campfire ink color. So pretty. I'm going to dirty up just a little bit 
on this one side there and then dirty it just a little bit here who would love that yep now let's do a little bit of brown and white splatter so I've got vintage photo I'm just going to do a few little splatters and then just a few little white splatters nothing major hopefully remember this is the one I can't control too much of okay I like that yep pretty Oh, I love it. Let me pick it up with my tweezers. Maybe that'll help me a little bit. There we go. Still smell coffee. Oh, it smells so good. Beautiful vintage stamped ephemera. And all you need is some cutoffs of your tea stained papers and some stamps. Maybe a couple of different colors of ink. That's it. All you need beautiful i love that that is looking a little more orange than what it actually is it is a deep like a red rust color it's pretty all right i'm gonna put that off to the side and let it dry beautiful 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 i'm gonna get my messy rag wet and wipe off my stamps. I have stamps in my floor off to my left here by the door that have been sitting there for over a week because I didn't clean them as I was using them. I said I'll clean them later. Guess what? Later never came and they're still sitting in my floor. Now I have ink all over my fingers but nothing a little bleach won't take care of later. Okay I'm gonna put that one up and let's go to that fall themed one. Let me put these up. Okay, I put it up, but I'm going to use this background. So I should have left it out. Okay, so the background from the Papillon, I'm going to cover the whole thing and I will round corners and all that stuff in a minute. I'm going to get the black soot and just cover it enough so that it'll cover the whole thing here. All right, let's stamp that. Okay. All right, I got almost every bit of it. I'm okay with not having those pieces down there done. Let's do a little off stamping and get that covered up. Oh yeah, I like that. That's a pretty background stamp. Lovely. Let's wipe that one off. Okay, and then I'm gonna use the leaves off of this photo clay um, stamp set the um, thankful collection we have in the shop I'm gonna get these two maple leaves I'm assuming and get the let's see here let's do the carved pumpkin and forest moss I'm gonna get my smaller stamp block okay let's cover up our black here and go to carved pumpkin forest moss let's do forest moss first let's see how this looks okay barely getting a little bit of feel through there but it'll show up a little bit better the more we do it and when it dries it'll show up just a little bit better too 
I'm okay with just having some faint leaf print in the background. I think if I do this bigger one down here in carved pumpkin. Now this is not oxide ink that I have. Um, what we have in the shop is oxide ink in the carved pumpkin. So hopefully that's what you're looking for. Let's do it this way. Have that stem right there in the corner and stamp on top. Oh, I like that. Pretty stuff. Let's do um, one of each again. This one in carved pumpkin. And I'm going to do it kind of off to the side here like this. And then I'll do the other big green one up there. Just having a little bit of a hint of fall in our journals. I like that idea. Pretty. Okay, I'm going to round my corners and ink the edges. I bet if I would have done the background in that gray, that would have, I mean, shown up even better, but I like just the faint hint of it. Um, and I think I want to ink around it in my carved pumpkin. So let's change out this blending pad. Oh yeah, I like that. I like that look. Great little um, kind of not in your face. This is fall, but kind of a little subtle hint of fall to put in your journals. I love that. Let's do a little bit of dirtying up up there and right there. Pretty. And we could put this um, in a pocket or just as decoration on a page or use the back for journaling. Beautiful. I love it. There's another way to make your own stamped ephemera. Now let's see what else can we do here. Okay let's make two right together. I have the botanical collage or botanical elements. Um, I think that might be how it's listed sometimes but on the actual um, stamp set it says botanical collage and my big block. I love these florals in this and this would look really pretty with that botanical uh, digital set that I'm making um, that journal I love with Miss Jennifer's Etsy stuff. I love that. Let's go with this gray. I'm using Memento Gray Flannel. I've been getting a lot of use out of this gray flannel here lately. Uh, I'm going to try to do two on this one cut off. And we'll do one in gray flannel and we'll do another one in a different color. But let's do a layered look. That's what we're doing today is making our own ephemera with layered stamping. And let's do this one at the top here. Right down the center, hopefully, maybe. <laughs> Just hold it down and get a good even press. Pretty. I oh, love that. Okay, and let's do a layer of some kind. Some little layer. Ooh, we're going to have to use this one too. That would be some really pretty silhouette stamping with maybe one of the colorful backgrounds. We're going to do that next after we get done with this one. 
Um, what do we want to put as an accent on here? I love these little seals down here. Kind of like postal seals. This is the Moth Study from Tim Holtz. Now, I got all of these from the shop, so we have at one time or another carried every one of these. But now, if we don't have them there now, it's because of that manufacturer issue that Mr. Holtz is having right now. Okay, let's do it in the green. Y'all like how I just make the decision right there with you? Don't really usually have anything, any rhyme or reason. Um, <laughs> when I start a video, it's just like fly by the seat of your pants. Go for it, Melina. Uh, I think I might just stamp off up here so it's a little bit fainter. I like that look. A little more faint there. Let's do... I'm going to do one way down here and then off stamp it there and then off stamp again right there. Oh, I like that. That one won't be on that. I just done that. So look at that. How pretty. And I think I will ink with that same color too. So let me see. I know I've got a sponge already. Yep, for that one. Here it is. Okay, I didn't um, splatter on that last one. I don't know that I want to. Hmm. I have to think about that one for a minute. Let's go. Yeah, just go ahead and go for it, Melina. You've already done it. Okay, there's that. And let's round our corners. I'll just love rounded corners on these. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. But I love that look. It looks like a custom piece of ephemera. Okay, and then the forest moss. This is one of the colors that we keep stocked. It's just a beautiful, vintagey, kind of deep green. Very pretty. Nothing too bright. I love that color. And we're going to splatter on this one. Look at that. Beautiful. Let's do some splattering with the same colors we did on the other one. Vintage photo and the picket fence. So vintage photo oxide. And get some in the corners and where we hadn't stamped a little bit more and I need some right there there we go <laughs> it wasn't wanting to cooperate and now I don't like that little line that it's done right there there we go that's a little bit better okay and then the picket fence and this paper, and this is just regular copy paper that I tea stained, but it really soaks up the ink and takes it very well. And so maybe that's because it has been inked before. I mean, you know, with the tea. So it really takes to that inking very well. Look at that. I love this vintage ephemera. So we are creating vintage ephemera with layered stamping. Beautiful results. I'll show you everything when we get done. Let's change to one of the other um, ink or other stamps in that collection there. Let's just do the other floral. So, so we've already done something with butterflies on it. Okay, I'm going to get that same ledger, um, and I'm going to go in with the gray as just a background, and just kind of like a hit or miss background. It doesn't have to be anything solid, 
we're just going to go right over that stamp that we did there from the other one just get us a little random background going there I love that and then let's ink this one in the carved pumpkin just something different let's go for it don't be scared and remember this carved pumpkin that I have is not the oxide so it's really going to soak in to this um, paper your oxide inks um, normally stand up on top they don't soak in as much and then you can activate them with water and they do this beautiful uh, oxidation process hence the name so that's a little bit of a background on the differences of the oxide ink and the regular distress I'm gonna to have to go off just a little bit because if I do it like this for it to fit that flower is going to be sideways and I don't want that so let's just go straight down like this give us some even pressure rolled around on here so everything gets on there okay oh okay I like that okay so you've got oxide no you don't have oxide you have regular this is fade resistance dye ink you have dye ink on your background but that's coming to the foreground because we're using regular distress ink if I were to stamp with this black oxide same little diamond shape stamp and this is oxide ink this is going to come to the foreground that's going to be your main image that you see because it is an oxide ink so even faded out and stamped second you're going to see it just a little bit more than you do any of the rest so the orange is kind of like faded to the background now that dye ink from memento is on top of that now even though we stamped it first but then our oxide ink is on the foreground now all the way to the front that's the one you're going to see the most and I think on this one I'm going to rip the top and the bottom I want a ripped edge so just top and bottom I want to rip we've got a bunch of blank space at the bottom of this one too so that's going to help get rid of that and then let's ink around the edges with our um, walnut stain so a nice brown aged ink around the edges if I were to have had the um, oxide carved pumpkin that would have been up on top it would have been like uh, hey how are you nice to meet you cuz I'm right here in your face but with it being just the distress ink it kind of faded away to the background and kind of did uh, me a huge favor in making it look even more vintage because it's faded back I love that and then I'm going to go over these um, little stamps that I done here in the black and fade them out just a little bit since they are so prominent oh I like that now we need to um, do a little bit of um, splattering and I want to do the picket fence just because I love how that white picks up um, but let's do the Uncharted Mariner and picket fence okay just something a little different um, I'm not a big fan of orange and blue together but that <laughs> that is so faded in the back and uh, anybody from Alabama knows 
what that is hinting toward. I'm an Alabama fan, not an Auburn fan. And I'm sure anybody in any other state that follows college football knew what I was hinting around to before I even said that. Okay, I love it though. I love that together, don't tell my husband. He doesn't even let us go out of the house with anything orange and blue together. If we have a combination of orange and blue on, he's like, um, don't you need to go change? You've got orange and blue on. I, no lie, I'm not kidding you. It's a it's a big thing here in the South, college football, and you know it's starting this weekend. Already had a few um, games playing last night. It was wonderful. Turn on the TV and hear uh, Kirk Curb Street and all of that gang talking. Love it. We love 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 college football in this house. So. That is that one, and you might say, well, you kind of covered up most everything, and this is looking more yellow on the camera for whatever reason. It's carved pumpkin. It's orange. I mean, it's like pumpkin orange. Um, you might say, well, you've covered up most everything. Well, it's supposed to look vintage, and if this is not a vintage piece of ephemera, I don't know what is. That is very vintage, and I will show you end result in just a bit when everything is dry. Uh, let's do one with those beautiful trees I'm going to put just a little bit of the water straight on that and stamp it there and then wipe off to get that clean okay um yeah let's do those trees and what background are we going to do I'll get every one of these in bags in just a minute yeah, let's do a ledger background. Let's do this other one. Ledger background with, oh, let's do it sideways like this. Got our little trees, and that can be the silhouette. And look at that beautiful coloring on this um let's do green forest and walls as our background mm -hmm. listen to me how excited i am i'm so excited as our kids used to say both of them use that term well which you know of course uh aaron's story he started talking a lot lot later in life but um even he did that i'm so excited i'm so excited he would say Bethany would do the same thing. I so sided. Mommy, I so sided. <laughs> it was so sweet. So sweet. Okay, I have inked this entire thing, which I didn't need to do. But I'll get a couple of stampings out of it. So I'm going sideways with this. Oh, I love it. And I guess Lila thought I was calling her when I started sing song in that because she came running I was not talking to you I was not talking to you no I was not oh okay wow she came straight to me to talk to me I don't have any place for you to sit I'm sorry there's no place Nani's desk is totally totally dirty look up at everybody tell them say I just got my nose shaved and I just got my ears shaved didn't you didn't you? Yeah, those ears. Woo! You can see all the way down them, that's for sure. Look up at them. Are you scared? <laughs> oh, wait, yeah. I wasn't talking to you, though. Thanks. Anytime I start baby talking, she thinks I'm talking to her. Of course. Because she is Nani's baby. Okay. And then last one. Get that inked. Well, Aaron's in his room talking to somebody or going along with a movie or something. I hear him mumbling. Okay, and then our little tree line, and we're going to do it in black and silhouette them. So pretty. Ooh, look at that. That's gorgeous. And we still have some of these in the shop. 
So I hope I'm giving you some ideas on how to use your tree stamps. Um, but don't go along with me as far as how to keep up with all of your stuff that's on your desk because I'm no good at that. I no good at that. Okay. Oh, I love this. I need to let the, I need to let the stamp lie. Um, I learned that a long time ago when I was a stamp it up rep. Don't try to move or manipulate the stamp when it's on the block because you'll make it go wonky. So I just laid it down and see I've got a straight line. Don't try to manipulate the stamp. Let it do its thing. Okay, I'm going to turn my black soot oxide over on top of this and then start swirling. And then go back and pat, pat, pat. Make sure everything is nice and covered. And try not to make the little lines of the pad, but sometimes it just can't be helped. Okay, and then I'm going to go straight down and get some even pressure. And Lila is walking away with scrap paper that she got out of my garbage. Yay. All right, so on this one, I had a, I've got a really nice wrinkle right there in this paper. And so it shows up really well in that. And I like it. I like the look of it. Why are you chewing paper? Do you have a, a paper? You, you need you need paper, huh? You need to chew on paper? Hmm. Um, let's get some of these individual trees out of here. I love that. Do a little bit of splattering. Let's go ahead and cut this one off and make it its own little piece. And we can do some vintage photo splattering on it. I think I'm going to leave it as is as far as the corners. Oh, I like that. It looks like a little road cut into it. So if you're stamping on wrinkled paper and you have some tree stamps, there you go. You're welcome. Okay. Let's get some trees. Let's do, we're going to have to do the little short ones. I know, let's make our own little forest. Okay, get my stamp, my acrylic. Whoa, what you doing? Somebody at the door? Yeah, that's just Aaron. Okay, and then I'm going to stamp one of the trees just individually. Oh, I love it. And we've got the nice little wrinkles in the paper, so it's not going to be a perfect stamped image. But we're going to make our own little forest. I really like that. And then I'm going to off stamp over here. Just barely get a little, few little branches there and a few little branches there. Okay, so there's four of that little one. And let's wipe this one off and get the tiny one. These would be very pretty in Christmas journals. Okay, I'm going to, hmm stamp there and then off stamp right beside it so look that tree looks like it's in the background of our little forest we're making here and then I'm going to stamp down there and then stamp up so we've got a little tree in the background of our forest another one back there and then Let's do one off to the side here and then another one there and off to the side here. 
There we go. Ooh, I like that. Let's do a few more off stamps to get us a nice little forest going. Oh, y'all. That one's too pretty. One more. Look at that. And it's got the little creases in it. And then we've made our little forest with all of the trees in the background. I am going to um, round the corners of this one and ink the edges. Okay. And ink with some walnut stain. This one would be very pretty with a little word phrase on it. So I think I'll add that in just a minute when I get done inking the edges. So see, nothing thrown away. This um, off cut of tea stain paper been in my scrap pile for a while and wanted to do something with it. So layered stamping it was. I love the script stamp in the background on these. Very pretty. Pieces of old looking ephemera and we made it right here. Ain't that neat? Okay, let's do some splattering and then we will um, get to our winner of our giveaway. So what do we want to splatter with? Let's splatter this one with some vintage photo. Look at there, I already got a little bit of splatter coming out of there. So this one's gonna have a little bit of vintage photo on it too, whether I wanted it to or not. Very pretty. Y'all know me in splatters, though. I love putting splatters on. That is nice. Very um, vintage looking once the uh, oxide activates. I'll show you these two big plops of it that happened on this one. Very pretty. There we go. You can see it already working on my background paper. Neat. Uh, kind of looks like snow, uh, which is the total reason I will be using white on this too, is because it looks like snow. Now that's a huge, huge dot of snow. They must be in um, Antarctica or something. They're getting lots and lots and lots of big flakes of snow. <laughs> Okay, a little bit more right through there. And then this one, I just barely want a few flakes. Nothing major like I did up there on that one. Okay, I do want a dot on these huge dots here. And I'm just barely touching the barrel to those huge dots to get a little something different going there. That's going to give me some nice little age spots around the edges of that. Okay, so I will set these aside and let them dry. But I'm loving that. And I think I might get this one to do a little bit of running. I like that. I like how they've mixed together the vintage photo and the picket fence has mixed in and I'm going to blot this so it don't look like a little snake hopefully there we go yep these look like little snakes too it's kind of dull those up a little bit that's better I'll bring you back and show you once they get completely dry. 
that one is pretty and this one is also pretty I love that it's kind of like an old vintage uh, postcard and um, I'll get you all of the still shots on those as soon as they dry. We'll get this cleaned up and then we're going to announce our winner. And here they are, the finished pieces of vintage ephemera that we made. I love each and every one of them. I can't pick a favorite. Um, maybe I can, those two. <laughs> but they're all gorgeous. I love all of them. This one has that, uh, I've been in an old locker and got raindrops all over me kind of feel. Love that one. This one, I love all the snow we created on it. Gorgeous pieces. And uh, I will have still shots at the end so that you can see the true color in them because my camera likes changing colors on y'all. I really like that one. That could go in pretty much any journal, even if it's not fall themed. I love these pieces of ephemera. I love stamping, uh, layered stamping, and making my own ephemera too. So no need to have to buy um, a pack of ephemera, even though I'm all for you buying ephemera from us at scrapbookingwithme.com. <laughs> uh, but here is everything finished, and now let's announce that winner. Right, so here is our ephemera holder, and here is our YouTube picker, and we're going to press start and pick our winner. Our winner is Debbie Benneman. I love all vintage paper and pretty one, and the pretty ones. Tim Holtz, 49 and Market. I love any with the cutouts and ephemera. Me too, Deb. I love them. So Deb Benneman. You are my winner. There is the spelling of her name there. Sorry, it's blurry. Deb Benneman. Uh, my camera does crazy things to my iPad whenever I have it out. See, it's turning everything a shade of yellow. So, Deb, this is yours. I need you to email me at melinapilot at yahoo.com. So, Melina Pilot, M E L I N A. P-Y-L-A-N-T at yahoo.com and uh, send me your address so that I can get this mailed out to you. Congratulations, Miss Deb. Um, and uh, please, 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 if you are watching this video, do not give away her name in the comments. You can congratulate her. Just please don't say her name in the comments, okay? Um, I need people watching this video, not just coming to the comments and going, oh yeah, that's who won, so yeah. <laughs> I don't have to watch her video. Um, that's just a me thing. Please <laughs> just don't say her name in the comments. You can congratulate the winner, and yes, if you know her, that's wonderful, and you can message her, but um, just don't say her name in the comments. I want people watching the video. Anyway... <laughs> I know, y'all think I'm crazy and y'all still keep coming back. So what does that say about y'all? <laughs> I love you. You are my people. Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. All of the stuff involved in this video. Y'all have a great day. God bless. Bye, y'all.